Everyone was dead silent. The pieces of crystal were everywhere. All over the console, the floor, maybe even some in my hair. I mean, ouch. Love smiled darkly. I felt a horrible guilt wash over me. Same man. That's how I feel subjecting my precious time to this story. I was stuck here forever. Maybe I should have just left in the first place. My emotions were right. I was wrong. Well, since you never left in the first place I'm assuming you never wanted to. Said love. Fear passed out. Then anger's head exploded. You idiot. She bellowed, running for love. She groaned and waved her staff at anger. Anger was thrown into a pile of blue memories. Love then put some strange sticky blue stuff at anger. At anger. Not on anger. At anger. I hate this story so much. She was then frozen. Anger growled and tried to free herself, but it was useless. All the others backed away. But I stayed put. Edlia. Come back here. It's safer. Cried fear, who had woken up. Damn. That was quick. That was luck that you didn't die with the car collision. Please come here. I mean, she could still die, but whatever. But I ignored her and kept staring at love. She stared right back at me. Her eyes were cold, but I ignored that. My fury was too strong and her stupid staff didn't scare me anymore. Let me get this straight. She's feeling emotions while her actual physical emotions are around her? Okay then. Disgust stood next to me. Oh, Disgust. You still are my friend. Aren't you? Asked Love coolly. Get that spelling out of here. No. Not anymore. If you hurt my... No. Ah girl, then you are no friend of mine. Said Disgust. I felt pride from head to toe. Oh great, another emotion you don't have. Sadness stepped forward and nodded. Joy was weak, her skin had stopped glowing and her face was tired. But she nodded all the same. Fear stepped forward to, only a couple of centimeters, but it still counted. You're a New Yorker, shouldn't you be using inches? Anger smiled. You are all making a big mistake. You can form a wall, throw memories and do whatever, but you can't get rid of me if you tried. I'm here forever, and as you know, Edliu is gone forever now. And so are you. Said Love cruelly. You can never ever get her back, you useless idiots. Go and jump in the memory dump, because that's where you belong. I was going to say that was pretty dark, but that was very vanilla compared to some of my other stories. Then I had another idea. Sadness. We needed to get her to the console. Explain please. But love was blocking it, and there was no way to get past her. I didn't know how to create a diversion, and the emotions were arguing with love, so it was hard to think. Maybe the emotions arguing could be a distraction? No. It seemed too easy. There had to be another way. I walked away from the others to the broken window. I noticed that disgust was ewing over the blue sticky stuff on her. Fear had also got it on her too, so now it was sadness and joy. I looked out the window, then at the core memories. I picked one up. It was a bright pale yellow. In it was me reading Harry Potter. I looked so happy. A tear rolled down my cheek. How do you look happy while reading a book though? Sadness came over and sat next to me. Sadness. What are you doing here? Anyway, I've had an idea. You need to touch the console. But we just need a distraction. I said, looking at my islands of personality. I don't think this will work. Joy is barely moving, and love is about to throw her into the memory dump along with the rest of us. There's no way. Sadness said sadly pushing her horn-rimmed glasses against her little blue nose. How do you know they're horn-rimmed, Eddie? That's okay, because I'm the distraction. While you can, press those console buttons. I said, looking over at Love sitting on the console while staring darkly at Joy. Even if I never go home, at least Love can be defeated. 
Sadness sighed and we both turned to face love. Joy was not moving. Sadness ran over to her. The other emotions weren't moving either. Wait, love killed them? How did she even do that? It was just me and sadness. Love came over to us, her cloak and hair flowing. Her staff glowed in the mysterious light. I put my arm in front of sadness. Love laughed and glanced at her staff. But I didn't care. Her stupid staff was nothing but junk to me. I grabbed the staff my free hand. What even was that sentence? Love pulled it away. I punched her in the guts. She screamed. I looked at sadness. She ran rather slowly to the console. No. Screamed love. I grabbed her cloak and pulled her towards me. She put her staff in front of my face. I grabbed the staff and she let go and went after sadness. Why did she let Eddie take it? Love was faster than sadness, who was nearly at the console. I smashed the jewel on top of the staff and love slowed down, but not enough. Can someone explain where love even got her staff from in the first place? She grabbed sadness by the hair and pulled her. Now you can join your friends. Love said darkly. I ran up at love and kicked her in the back and started kicking her legs. I don't think that's the most effective technique Eddie. I grabbed her waist and squeezed it as hard as I could. Sadness was free. Love yelped and punched me hard in the head and threw me to the ground. All went black. This was it. This time was I dead for real. But then I could hear slightly muffled voices. They sounded familiar. I suddenly realized there were sobs. Was I still in my own head? I tried to open my eyes, but it wasn't working. Suddenly there was a bright light. I felt like I was being sucked. Suddenly the world came into vision. Suddenly the story became 20 times worse. My emotions were standing above me. I felt instant disappointment. Same man. I wasn't home. But the emotions weren't dead. Joy helped me up. She looked back to normal. So did the others. You saved us and yourself Edlia. Well done. Said Joy proudly. But I'm still stuck here forever. I sighed sadly. Oh no you're not. Said Joy. Because, after love was defeated, a voice said you're leaving back in a few minutes. A voice? What the flying fudge? Where did that come from? Maybe it was God. I felt a sudden burst of excitement. I was leaving. But then I sighed. It was time for a goodbye. Man, I'm so bummed about saying goodbye. I went up to Fear. I shook her hand and gave her a hug. Fear smiled. Stay safe. A day lie, and stay away from coins on roads. She said. Anger was next. I fist bumped her. Have a nice trip home. I don't you'll be hearing from me in a while. Anger said, glancing at sadness. Um. Is there some subplot going on here? Joy was next. I gave her a big hug. Thank you for giving me and the others a big adventure. Stay positive. Said Joy. Disgust was next. Stay away from messy eaters and people with no manners. Remember to fit in. Said disgust. Last but not least was sadness. She was crying. Goodbye. I'll miss you. Said sadness. I hugged her. Remember. We'll always be here, in your head. Said joy. Watching you sleep every night. Goodbye guys. I said. Bye. They called together. We'll always be here, making you. Well, you. Does she get to decide when she leaves? I'd care anymore. A blinding light flashed in front of my eyes. I waved my goodbye, then they were gone. It was darkness all over again. I couldn't hear anything this time. Suddenly there was a light. I opened my eyes. I looked around. I was in a white bed with a white ceiling, and a few machines were connected to my body. I noticed I was wearing the same clothes as before I crashed, expect with a green cloth vest on. 
Suddenly a woman with a white jacket and a mask on her face came in. She took the mask of and smiled. She's awake. Cried the nurse. Then, my mum and dad came in. My dad had his short brown hair hidden under a hat. His expression was a small smile. My mum flipped her blonde hair and came over to me. What's with the characters in this story flipping their hair all the time? Edlia, you're alright. Cried my parents. I looked at them gratefully. Yeah, and I had this amazing adventure with these people inside my head. It was crazy. I said. My parents smiled. We'll be taking her to the insane asylum after this, they thought. At the end of the bed I saw a few small gifts. I saw a Harry Potter book, how much does this chick love Harry Potter? And a small chocolate bar from Jesse. How did she know it was from him? How's Sky? I asked. She's missed you. But apart from that, she's okay. Said my mum. What about Jesse? I asked, a bit concerned. He's fine. My dad said gruffly. He wasn't super fond of Jesse and his family. Why do I kind of get the feeling her dad is abusive? When exactly are we leaving? I asked. I hoped we weren't going to stay here too long. I wasn't fond of this hospital. Bruh you just got up. The doctors will probably want to take tests and things like that. Said my mum. They can't believe you survived a car crash with nothing more than a knockout. Must be some kind of miracle. Said my dad. He sure sounds enthusiastic about her being alive, not. The nurse said she needed to take my blood pressure and do boring stuff like that, so my parents were excused. After some boring tests and stuff, Jesse came for a visit. Hey Eddie. I hope you like that kind of chocolate bar. Jesse said kindly. I nodded. Who refers to it as a chocolate bar in speech? It sounds so formal. Aniho. My mum said I can't stay here too long because I need to do some stupid basketball practice. Jesse sighed. I shrugged kindly. How do you shrug kindly? He smiled. People are still cooing over how you survived that crash. I'm honestly surprised it's not on television. Said Jesse, probably trying to make me feel better. Well, I got a scram now. See you tomorrow, Eddie. He said, walking out the door. I smiled. Everything felt fine now. No, Eddie, it's not fine. It never was fine. Everything felt so warm and cuddly, like sky. My parents were back. I was okay, Jesse was cool. I was home, right here in New York City. It felt like nothing could ever change. Ever. Oh how wrong I was. Damn right you are. And that's the end people OMG. There is going to be a sequel, probably coming out in another few weeks or something. I dedicate my story to my best friend Sky. Thanks for being awesome. I don't talk to her anymore, sorry guys. Also to my two awesome cats. Thanks guys for reading, I'd really appreciate some reviews. Tilda Ponistries. So fun fact, I was actually writing a sequel, but then I discontinued it because I had no ideas for it whatsoever. Also it was terrible. I barely even remember what happens in it lol. So, just like with the My Immortal series, I'll be doing a speed paint. I've decided to draw love. I've never actually drawn her before, so. Here we go.